where she flies, how fast she flies, those things depend on the pilot. But whether she's able to fly at all, that depends on you men of maintenance and repair. The pilot may have her head in the clouds for a while, but she knows who'll be waiting up for her when she gets back. Make no mistake about it, she's your baby. The only thing you have to worry about is whether you completely understand her. She's temperamental, and she's delicately made. She's subject to terrific strains and stresses, great centrifugal forces, considerable vibrations, She's built to closer tolerances than any craft that flies. Nothing heavy or cumbersome about this baby. No excess weight, not an ounce. She's the toe dancer of the sky. This film will be an introduction to the basic construction of the helicopter. First, we will consider the parts involved in producing power. Then, the power control system the oil system, the electrical system, and finally, the flight control system. This film will limit itself to the single rotor, two-place helicopter, the model that is used in basic training, the HTL-5. Power for flight is produced by the engine-driven rotor system. The rotor system consists of the rotor blades, the rotor head or hub, and the necessary linkages and levers that change the pitch of the blades. The blades are made of laminated wood covered with fiberglass cloth. The leading edge is covered with a stainless steel cap. Here is the engine that powers the rotor system. This particular engine is an unsupercharged six-cylinder horizontally opposed air-cooled engine developing 200 horsepower. It is mounted vertically in the fuselage of the helicopter, approximately at the center of gravity. The engine drives the rotors through a clutch and freewheeling coupling built into the transmission. The main rotor is mounted to the top of the transmission, which in turn is mounted on the top of the engine, making the complete assembly one rigid unit. The engine is mounted on a plate suspended from a two-beam span and pivots on a welded steel tube basket type structure which is attached on the right and left side to the main fuselage structure. The basket is attached to the fuselage frame through two rubber shock mounts on the right and left side of the fuselage. These rubber mounts resist movement in the vertical direction much more than in the fore and aft direction. Two sprag mounts, which are attached to the bottom of the engine, permit the transmission and rotor assembly to move on the shock mounts within a restricted range. Four safety cables, which are attached to the four corners of the bottom of the engine, serve as a safety device in case the sprag mounts fail. The main rotor mast extends from the top of the main transmission. The purpose of the mast is to support and drive the main rotor blades through the mast's essential unit. The mast is made of steel tubing, two and three-eighths inches in diameter. There are five main sections on the mast, namely the main rotor head, stabilizer, the dampers, the swash plate, and the driving splines, which are engaged by the transmission. The stabilizer bar and damper assembly is located just below the main rotor and is flying to the mast. When gusts of wind tend to change the pitch of the blade suddenly, thus causing uneven flight, the gyroscopic effect of the stabilizer bar exerts a damping effect on the rotor blade. This is the body or central portion of the fuselage. The fuselage itself is constructed of welded steel tubing. This model helicopter has one fuel tank mounted on top of the fuselage aft of the main transmission. Fuel is supplied to the engine by a gravity feed fuel system. Fuel flows from the tank through the shutoff valve, 
which is operated by the control knob to the left of the pilot's seat. It then goes through the strainer and into the carburetor. The fuel system is serviced from the left side of the helicopter. The fuel shutoff control knob operates the shutoff valve through an enclosed flexible cable. Pushing the knob in opens the valve and allows the fuel to flow. Pulling the knob out closes the valve and stops the fuel flow. Now let's examine the engine controls. Mounted at the top left side of the pedestal is a conventional mixture control lever. This regulates the fuel-air mixture supplied by the carburetor to the engine. Move it to the top of the quadrant for full rich and to the bottom for cutoff. Intermediate positions between rich and cutoff give a corresponding rich or lean mixture. This is the carburetor heat control lever. It is situated adjacent to the mixture control lever. It is moved upward to provide cold filtered air to the carburetor and moved to hot to provide heated unfiltered air. This is the starter pedal located on the box beam ahead of the pilot seat. It is connected to the direct cranking starter by a cable. The pedal is pushed down to operate the starter after the battery switch is turned on. This is the ignition switch. Ignition is furnished in the conventional manner by two magnetos controlled by the ignition switch. The engine instrument consists of the carburetor air temperature gauge the dual tachometer, the manifold pressure gauge, cylinder head temperature gauge, and the oil temperature gauge. This is the engine throttle. It is incorporated in the collective pitch stick, similar to the motorcycle type throttle. The throttle is synchronized mechanically with the collective pitch stick so that increasing collective pitch automatically increases the throttle opening to provide additional power required by increased pitch. Lowering the stick automatically decreases the throttle opening as the pitch of the blades is reduced. A narrowed ring on the end of the pilot's grip is used to provide friction and prevent the throttle from creeping. In addition, an override mechanism allows the throttle to be operated and adjusted independently of the collective stick. The helicopter's oil system includes an oil tank which supplies the entire system. The oil temperature is automatically controlled and the system is serviced from the left side of the helicopter. The engine oil system controls consist of an oil temperature selector switch which enables the pilot to read engine oil temperature when moved to engine and transmission oil temperature when moved to transmission. The oil temperature gauge and the oil pressure gauge are incorporated in the engine gauge unit. The electrical system in this helicopter is a single wire DC 24 volt type protected by circuit breakers on the instrument panel. A generator mounted on the transmission and a voltage regulator are used to charge the battery. An external power receptacle on the left side furnishes an outside power source. When external power is used, the battery switch must be off. Now let's examine the flight control system. This control system includes the cyclic stick the collective pitch stick and the tail rotor control pedals or rudder pedals. Notice that this trainer type helicopter has two sets of controls, one for the instructor and one for the student pilot. Both cyclic and collective sticks have adjustment knobs which provide friction as desired by the individual pilot. Let's see first how the collective pitch control system operates. 
The purpose of this system is to control the pitch of the main rotor blades collectively, that is, all at the same time, thus controlling vertical flight upward or downward by increasing or decreasing lift. When the pilot pulls the collective pitch stick up, he activates the series of linkages and bell cranks, which in turn increase the pitch of the blades. When the pitch of the blades is increased and rotor RPM is maintained, the rotor generates lift, thus causing the helicopter to ascend vertically. When the pilot lowers the collective pitch stick, he decreases the pitch of the main rotor blade. There is less rotor lift generated, and the helicopter either ascends more slowly, stops and hovers, or descends. This is the cyclic control system. Its purpose is to tilt the rotor disc. This tilting of the rotor disc provides the horizontal component of rotor lift and causes the helicopter to move into horizontal flight in the direction in which the rotor disc is tilted. When the pilot moves the cyclic stick forward, the rotor disc is tilted forward and the helicopter moves forward. When he moves the stick aft, the helicopter moves backward. The direction of stick movement determines the direction of movement of the helicopter. The rotor disc is tilted without interfering with the collective pitch of the blade. Between the stationary portion of this control system and the revolving portion, which revolves with the mast and rotors, is a free mechanism called a swash plate. The purpose of this plate is to transfer the control from the lower or static portion of the system up to the upper or revolving portion. Essentially, the swash plate consists of two metal discs, one connected to the lower control linkages, the other connected to the linkages controlling the main rotor blade. The two are separated by bearings, which allow the top disc to revolve on the same axis as the stationary lower disc. These bearings keep the two plates parallel at all times. Thus, when the cyclic stick is pulled back, the linkages tilt the lower disc and the bearings force a corresponding change in the upper disc. This is the tail rotor control system. The tail rotor provides directional control. The pitch of the tail rotor blades is controlled by the pilot's rudder pedals. When he presses the left rudder pedal, the angle of the tail rotor blade's pitch is increased, pulling the tail around to the right and thus heading the helicopter to the left. When he presses the right pedal, this pitch is decreased. The torque reaction of the engine is then allowed to swing the tail around to the left and head the helicopter to the right. This has been a brief introduction to the essential parts of the helicopter, classified according to their function. First, we considered the parts involved in producing power. Then, the power control system, the oil system, the electrical system, and finally, the flight control system. Subsequent films and other training material will elaborate on this basic course in helicopter anatomy and will direct you in your work of maintenance and repair.